All right. Evoke candles. Evoke candles. Look at this. You got keychains. Hold on. Look at this. Is, this is beautiful. Look at this. Do you ever see this, Todd Knight? I'm sure oh, you've yeah. seen this many, many times. Look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judas Priest. And when you open it up, you know, it's a candle. It's a beautiful, well-made, and smells very, smells like metal. No, it doesn't smell like metal. It smells like, you know, <laughs> like a candle. <laughs> Saxon candle I have, and I know you don't make it anymore, but look at his beauty. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it looks like some sort of like, I don't know, missile or something or some cannon thing. <laughs> look at that. I know they don't make this anymore, but there's the other ones, and I'll show the pictures to everybody. There's six by six candles. That's your new band, right? Your prog band on the side. Yeah. yeah. Incredible prog album. There's a candles by six by six. You got the Saxon candles which is beautiful it's a beautiful big blue box with candles in there it's denim and leather and then of course we've got the judas priest which is beautiful tell everybody about six by six okay well the whole thing um i guess the whole thing started sort of uh, a year ago last april i think it was i got contacted um i've known i've known robert robert berry because i was in gtr with him yep so we 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 kept in touch and everything. He came to um, a couple of Saxon shows when we played in California and stuff. Northern California has been to that, so we've kept in touch. And um, he just emailed me out of the blue and said, um, "I've I've started writing with uh, with this guitarist you might know, like Ian Crichton. Yeah, I've known Ian because you know we've done festival gigs with Saga and stuff, and I was a big Saga fan. Well, I still am." And uh, Ian's one, actually one of my favourite guitarists ever. He said, I've started this band and with Ian and you're the guy. And I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically what happened. They'd been writing for a while beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Robert, um, Robert's got a studio in, in Northern California, near San Jose. And uh, he said, you know, we've got these tracks. What do you think? And I flew over there and, and put the drums on. Yeah, and, and and that's how it started. Basically, it was great, and uh, you know we get on get on great. The music's brilliant. We've already started working on the second album now. Hey, all right, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, and we're trying to sort out doing some shows next year. Yes, it's amazing. This is not a project. This is a band. You know. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I didn't have a lot of prog albums this year, so we did like a top ten list of uh, albums, and of course. Saxon was in our top 10 list of metal albums of the year, right? We, we had it like at yeah. number six, right? Yeah. But let me tell you, if I had a top 10 prog list, I would say six by six, your debut album, up there, up there. Incredible. I just think it's fantastic. I mean, there's a little bit of ELP there. There's a little yeah. bit of Saga there. There's maybe a little bit of sax in there. And man, your drumming is great. Your yeah, I mean, oh, thank you. No, I mean, it's generally just sort of, you know, people say to me, you know, what's it like and i just say well just imagine the three of us together that's what the that's what it is yeah you know there was nothing set out we're going to be like this or we're going to be like this it's just these us three guys boom that's it yeah anybody everybody go pick it up have a listen to it they have some videos online six by six you know uh, he reminds me of john wetton right oh, the right. vocals okay. the vocals it's that sort of sort of that melodic yeah prog like sound right tone yeah. we'll call it yeah i mean robert's got an amazing voice robert's Great amazing voice. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and ian's guitar work oh, oh yeah god there it was funny there were there were a couple of places when i went over there initially you know because they had the um demos robert had basically put down the templates of the drum parts because mm -hmm. he's a great drummer himself wow. and um, but they, they both said look this is you know they said just do your thing on, on the tracks. Don't copy what I've done. Just do your thing, which was great, you know. Yeah. But um, he just gave me a taste of the sort of feel of the track, you know, with what he'd done on it. 
And uh, there are a couple of things on the demos, and Ian was gradually replacing stuff. And there were a couple of solos and on a couple of the tracks. And I said to Ian, I, you know, because this was all done with, with me. It was I was in Robert's studio, but Ian was still in Toronto. So I, yeah. we got him on Zoom. I said, don't you bloody dare change <laughs> that solo. I just told him, I said, that solo saying, don't you dare change it. Yeah. Great, like, <laughs> you know what? I, and, and a hats off to you, man. Some great drum patterns. You know, you're really Thank playing you. the prog style. Whereas you know the blast beats on the metal stuff. But now you're just you're just all over the place, man. It's just I just I really enjoyed the album. I thought you guys. Oh, great! Thought. Thank you. How did you feel when you first joined the band? Like, like you know, what, what was that? What was that first feeling you got? You know, I'm part of something. You know, that's really you know taken off. Oh yeah, I mean. It was funny because, I mean, the band I was in beforehand, Toya, yeah. was actually bigger than Saxon at that time. Hey, uh, that's good to know. Um, so, I mean, but the thing was, it was just, it was, um, of course, you know, to join a new thing, get asked to join a new thing, it's very exciting for me. I mean, we all got on great. The only problem I had initially was, uh, you know, understanding their sort of northern accents, a couple of them, because I'm a southerner. You know, it was like, I mean... Sometimes when I, when when I was talking, Graham had the had the biggest you know accent, the hardest accent. But sometimes I, I'm just like he'd say something, I'd just sort of nod <laughs> as if I understood <laughs> what he said, and, and I'd go to Biff and say, "What did he say?" You know, <laughs> so he had a really broad Yorkshire accent, you know. But no, it was great. We I mean we had great fun, you know. Initially, you know, just straight away, it was from the off. Now, The Eagle Has Landed has become this legendary live album, so much so that you've come out with part two, part three, and then I have it here, part four, somewhere with the whole sort of three CD set. Yeah. Did the band know at the time it would really connect so much with the fans? No, I don't, I, I don't think so. I mean, for, for me personally, it was a bit of a, bit of a nightmare because I joined the band and they just said, oh, by the way, two weeks' time, we're recording a live album. I went, what? <laughs> I was like, geez, you know, and um, we did do some after that tour finished. We went off, you know, that was um, recorded on the on the British tour, the first tour. I did some of the tracks, and then we we did a European tour, and then we added some more British gigs early in the following in the following year because we just wanted to get more. Now, originally, it was going to be a double album. Oh. So there were a lot more tracks, but uh, Correa just wanted a single album. You know, in a way, it's probably, you know, who knows, you know, what, whether they, whether the double would have done better or not. I don't know. I've no so idea. those tapes exist, right? Those tapes exist from that era? Somewhere, but, I mean, they're not mixed. Okay. I don't think there's any mixing has been done. And to be quite honest with you, I have no idea where those, where those tapes are now. You know, maybe one of the other guys does. I don't, maybe Biff knows where they are. I don't know, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I know that the album has been re-released and remastered, and there were some bonus songs on there. Right. Maybe from that tour. Yeah, uh, again, maybe. I, I'd have to look it up. I don't remember. But, yeah, great album. I love it. It's it's raw, it's powerful, and it just Saxon in their element, right? That's, yeah, yeah. So power and the glory, right? Yeah. I mean, your drumming there is like you're there to prove yourself, right? Yeah, I was actually, yeah. That was that for me. It was like right, you know. I know how popular Pete Gill was. Yeah, yeah. So that was I had to prove myself on that. It's interesting because when I first bought that album a long time ago, you notice a massive change. Like you know, it's kind of like the difference between Dave Holland and you know when um, who's their current drummer uh, Travis Scott, Scott, Scott. Travis. Yeah. That it was like that difference. Like okay, this guy's more of a timekeeper versus this guy's out to friggin play right. some serious drumming here right right yeah i think i i also think you know um you know some of it is production as well all right yeah. you know yeah. i think you know i mean the drum you're just sound. modest you're just modest that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> ain't no production you're just playing better that's all it is to it. <laughs> did i show everybody this they should pick it up it was on a lot of Top 10 albums of 2022. A right. lot of metal albums. Were you surprised? Were you, were you kind of felt that way? Or? Oh, no. I mean, yeah, we're obviously surprised. And we're very, you know, we're very pleased that it's, that it's done it. 
you know, it's great. But, um, you know, again, I mean, as an album, I think, you know, the songs on it are great. I think the production's great. But you're always pleased when something like that happens. I mean, it's like as well, apparently we've, we've been on a few, with the 6x6 six six thing as well, we've been on a few top albums of this year as well, <laughs> which we're really pleased, or at least, you know, mentioned, you know. Yeah, so yeah. we're really pleased. So me personally, it's been a great year. <laughs> good, good stuff. Uh, what about a Canadian tour? Any plans for that? Going well, into Saxon. Canada for Saxon, yes, sorry. Saxon. Yeah, I mean, maybe next year. It's just, you know, we're just sort of trying to suss out things for next year. Good, good. So, so um, you guys are going to be on the road next year, right? Come, more or less. Right? Some of it. Or, or what's going to happen is, is well, I mean, we're, we're right in the middle of another album already. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, we're right like, in the middle, you know. What, what, so, how, I mean, how far I along are you? Uh, I mean, we're quite a way. We're, we're a ways off. I mean, the songs are almost all, you know, the songs are being sort of finalised uh, you know, as we talk, actually. Um, but I, sh- um, I think then we're going to release it in 24. And then oh, okay. that, that, that'll be a big touring. That'll be a so, big tour. So when you mean... So when you mean the album's almost done, do you mean like the lyrics, the vocals, and you're at the mixing stage now, or are you just no, 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 no. We've we've done the writing. Okay. So it's just a case of recording it all now. But it's the writing. The writing process is the process that takes the time. Quite frankly, because once you know, because you get so many ideas from everyone, piles in ideas, and we work on them, and and that's what takes the time. A lot of people don't know, but you can play. You know, you play. You play the keyboards, right? Do you play guitar? I don't remember. I play. I play a tiny bit of guitar, a bit of bass, keyboards. I'm no Rick Wakeman on the keyboards. No, you no. Know, but, I, but, I, <laughs> but who is? But uh, you know. But I, I get by with being able to write stuff. Yeah. So, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, because the drummers aren't usually the ones who are you know, stepping up to usually write songs, but you do play a role there, you know, and for many, many years yeah. you've been played a role. Yeah, I mean, it varies from album to album, you know, what, how, but I mean, everyone puts their bits in, you know. Yeah, yeah. And again, as I say, I mean, quite frankly, you know, in, you know, in a way it doesn't really matter who writes what, it's the five, it's us five guys that make it what it is. Is, is it kind of like, hey, guys, I got a song and everybody has like one song or a few songs and then you just pick the best ones and there's no like ego? No, there's no, no, there's no ego things. But obviously, you know, it, no one, I mean, no one brings in complete songs. You okay. know, people might bring in riff ideas, you know, or rhythm ideas, you know, whatever, groove ideas, whatever, you know, melody. So then we just work them all. We work through them all, you know. I think that's another uh, part of Saxon that everybody loves is because you guys do stick together as much as you can. Right. I mean, over the years Mm -hmm. there's been changes, right? Because life, life happens. Right. Yeah. But, but for the most part, you guys do stick around and you try to work together and it's a family sort of a unit, you know? Yeah, it is. And we're we're kind of like that with our crew as well. You know, when we go out, it's great. When we go out on tour, we get all our crew in and it's great. You know, that's cool. That's cool. Get on the old tour bus and off we go, you know. <laughs> All right. And thank you very much uh, for, uh, you know, Nigel, for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Look forward to see you on tour and some yeah. new music. Yeah. yeah, we're sort of, um, you know, sort of lining up tour dates for next year. We're doing the uh, Monsters of Rock Cruise. Hey, yeah, that's and fun. And we're doing, we're doing some shows in South America. Wow. Anywhere else in the world that's sort of uh, not typical? Um, no, there's that, and then and then we hit festival season again. So, and I see that'll that be you all guys throughout have... Europe and the UK again. So, but um, yeah, so I think you know we'll be doing a full. Oh, we're doing some more shows in Germany as well. We're doing about another. I think it's about another five or six shows in Germany and a couple in Poland. How as popular? Well. How popular is Saxon in Germany? Very. It's like. Could you guys, it's great. You guys... I mean, Germany's been great because they're, they're they, you know, that Germany's always stuck by us through whatever, you know, the lows and the highs, and which is great. But I mean, a lot of countries have, you know, can't, you know, can't, you can't sort of knock it, you know. And I just want to say we're we're incredibly grateful to all the fans that have stuck with us. And as I always say, we wouldn't be where we are without you.